Greetings and welcome once again to another Baptist Bread Devotional. Amen. And I am Brother Scott bringing you these devotions each and every day throughout the year of 2019. Amen. So let me flip this around and we will get started on today's devotional. Amen. Welcome everyone. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And today's devotional topic is titled, A Pillow, A Pillow. And the author for today's devotional is uh, John Hamblin, Dr. John Hamblin, evangelist from Caton, Michigan. John Hamblin. Amen. So, let's get started in this topic titled, A Pillow. And it says here, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Mark 4, 38a. And this is talking about the disciples on the one of their uh, events on the water there, and the storm arising, and Jesus was asleep, and they were getting all fearful because they didn't uh, trust that they would get to the other side, that Jesus would get them to the other side safely. And there's lots of times where we don't, tend to trust him to get us to the other side and he will amen if you're saved he'll get you safely to the other side to that heavenly place with him amen so whatever storm we might be going through he will see us through it amen all right so it says here the writer mark sees a peculiar object that doesn't normally go along with oars nets anchors and sails in a fishing boat and that's a pillow there are three tremendous truths that result, uh, revolve around this pillow. The first tremendous truth that rests with this pillow is poise in the storm. Remember, Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. If there is ever a moment for all hands on deck, it is in a great storm. Right, all hands on deck, it is in a great storm. But Jesus is found in the stern out of the splash of the spray he is calm cool and collected when you know the one who is stronger than any tempest you'll always have the stability for any storm amen and then we see psalm 93 4 psalm 93 4 is a reference here psalm 93 4 let's go there all right 93 verse 4 and it says here, The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, yea, than the mighty waves of the sea. Hallelujah. So, we can rest assured that the Lord is stronger than any tempest. You'll, have, you'll always have the stability for any storm. Amen. Another tremendous truth that rotates around this pillow is peace in the ship. For he is asleep. How could Jesus sleep in a storm? The same way Daniel slept in the lion's den. And that's found in Daniel 6.22. Daniel 6.22. Daniel 6, verse 22. This is Daniel in the den of lions. Daniel 6.22. Let's get there. Amen. Read some scripture. 6.22 says... My God has sent his angel, and hath shut the lion's mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Amen. So again, that's, uh, how could Jesus sleep in the storm, or in a storm? The same way Daniel slept in the den of lions, Daniel 6.22, and Peter slept in a prison cell, Acts 12, 6. Let's go to Acts 12, 6. Peter in the cell. Acts 12, verse 6. And it says here, and uh, 12, verse 6. Let's make sure that's right. Uh, yep, 12, 6. It says, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers, before the door kept the prison. And this is talking about Peter in the prison and the angel coming and letting him loose. 
and freeing him. And then, uh, the key to tranquility in troublesome times is thinking about God, who has the strength to take care of difficult days. See Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Isaiah 26, and verse number 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Amen. <clears throat> and then here, let's read verse 4. It says, Trust ye in the Lord forever. Amen. For the Lord, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Praise the Lord. All right. And then a final tremendous truth that uh, revolves around this pillow is to the predictability of the Savior when they awake him. While the wild commotion and the water coming into the boat didn't stir the Son of God, it was word it was word from his companions that brought him to their aid and assistance. The fact that God has helped the believer yesterday means he could and would help them today. See Lamentations three. Lamentations three. Lamentations the Lamentations 3. Mm -hmm -hmm. I think I'm going the right way. Lamentation. Uh, get through. Yep, Lamentation 3 and verse 22. 322 says thus. 322 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. And then it says here, they are, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Amen. <laughs> There's lots of good, this is a good, uh, let's keep going. It is good that a man should be both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Amen. And it goes on all the way down. All sorts of good stuff there. So that was Lamentations 3.22. Amen. So let's go ahead and read this again. So it says here again that um, there are three tremendous truths that revolve around this pillow. And again, the first tremendous truth that rests with this pillow is poise in the storm. And it says here, remember, Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat. If there is ever a moment for all hands on deck, it is in a great storm. But Jesus is found in the stern, out of the splash of the spray. He is calm, cool, and collected. And when you or I know the one who is stronger than any tempest, we'll, you'll always have the stability for any storm. Psalm 93, 4. So we should... Try to remain cool, calm, and collect, because we know that Jesus will always get us through it. Amen. Another tremendous truth that rotates around this pillow is peace in the ship, for he is asleep, and we can have peace in Jesus too. Amen. How could Jesus sleep in a, in a storm? The same way Daniel slept in the lion's den, in the den of lions. Daniel 6.22, and Peter slept in a prison cell. Acts 12.6. The key to tranquility in troublesome times is thinking about God, who has the strength to take care of difficult days. See Isaiah 26, 3 again. We just read that. And then again, the final tremendous truth that revolves around this pillow is the predictability of the Savior when they awake him. When the wild commotion and the water coming into the boat didn't stir the Son of God, it was word from his companions that brought him to their aid and assistance. The fact that God has helped the believer yesterday means he could and would help them today. See Lamentations 3.22. Let's go ahead and read that again. Lamentations 3.22, it says, It is, right now it is, of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. That's a good song, too. A good hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. All right. So that was the topic on a pillow. 
Jesus asleep on the pillow, and uh, he will help us through the storms of life until we get into heavenly places with him. So let us try to trust in him as much as possible to get us through anything that is troubling us. And if perhaps we've caused that trouble, well, <laughs> we should uh, try to flee from that trouble that we don't uh, get caught up in it. But just know that Jesus will still help us through it. Amen. All right, so now the morning reading is from Luke 22. Luke chapter 22. So let's go to Luke 22, and we're continuing in that chapter. So let's uh, start in verse 47, 47 through 71. So verse 47 st states, says right here, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. And this is in the garden of Gethsemane. This is in the garden where Jesus... Uh, is approached by Judas and is arrested. So that's uh, Jesus being portrayed by Judas. And it says here in verse 48, But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And we know that's Peter. Peter is the one that cut off the the high uh, the smote servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, "Suffer ye thus far." And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to hit, to him, "Be ye come out as against a thief with swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me." But this is your hour, and the power of darkness. Oh boy. Then took they him, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. Yeah, Peter followed afar off. And that was his first mistake. When we tend to follow Jesus afar off, and we don't get as close to him as possible, then we tend to get ourselves in trouble. Just as Peter did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it says, And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were sit, set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him, and said, This, this man was also with him. So when we go and sit down with the enemy, sit down with the world, instead of uh, being close to Jesus, this is what happens. <laughs> Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> so first he's following afar off, and then he starts sitting down with the world and and uh, people that he shouldn't be uh, hanging around with. <laughs> so are we doing that? We should be very careful. Amen. So again, it says, But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. Then we start denying the Lord and saying we don't know him because we want to hang out with the world. Oh, boy. I, yikes. Uh, and after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. <laughs> yikes. And about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, uh, saying, of a truth, this fellow, of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crew, and the Lord turned. Oh boy, this is this is uh, rough right here. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. So, uh, how often do we do things that we shouldn't and deny the Lord, and then he turns around and looks at us? just as he did Peter. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, and how and how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Ouch. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. 
And when they had uh, blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that thou that smote thee? And many other things uh, blasphemy spake, spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask, and if I also ask you, ye will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. Oh boy, yikes. So it says, And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. All right. That's some rough stuff right there. So that was Luke 22, fin finishing up the chapter, verses 47 through 71, talking about how Peter denied the Lord thrice, and Jesus looking upon him. That's a rough moment right there, so let us uh, take heed to that. When we start denying the Lord and start going out and wanting to go back into the world and get far off from, from Jesus, we tend to want to be like back away, way far away from the Lord when we should be up close to Him, grabbing onto Him and holding Him tight instead of being far away because we tend to get ourselves in trouble when we do that. So let's uh, learn how to get closer to the Lord, amen, and hold on to Him tight and He'll carry us through. Amen. I mean, there's times where he wants us to walk ourselves, but there's other times where he will carry us through situations. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. All right. Well, that will wrap it up for today's devotional titled A Pillow. And the morning reading was again from Luke 22, verses 47 through 71. And the evening reading will be from 1 Kings 16, 17, and 18. So 1 Kings 16 through, through 18 for the evening reading. Amen. Alright, well, thank you all for watching these videos and those who be getting on the replay. And if you have not trusted Jesus Christ, today is the day to do so because you never know what's going to happen in the next moment or tomorrow. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. So it's good that you would call on the name of the Lord and have Him save your soul today if you have not been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb because that is the only thing that can save you is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Once you trust him as your savior, you are washed of all your sin, past, present, and future. And Jesus will take you and to heavenly places when you pass from this earth, whether it's in the rapture or before that happens. All right, so hope you'll trust him today. Remember, Jesus saves. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. All right, well, thank you again for watching, and we'll be back again, Lord willing, tomorrow for the next topic, which is titled, Things Will Be All Smoothed Out. Things Will Be All Smoothed Out. Amen. So that is for tomorrow. So again, I appreciate you all watching these videos, and hope they're helping a blessing to you, and we'll see you next time. So you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. And amen.